I'm Mike Gibson and this is Expat in Russia. I've lived in Russia for 27 years and I totally love this place. So I want to share some Russian stories with you. This is a big country with a big heart and big stories to tell. Today we're going to look at two iconic aircraft, both used to teach pilots to learn to fly. One is the Yak-18T, used to train Aeroflot pilots, and the other is the Cessna, the most manufactured aircraft in the history of aviation. So we're at the Civica Private Airfield. Many aviation clubs are based here. It was here many years ago that my first instructor, Pavel Kalugin, a Jedi flight master, opened the skies to me. I spent many hours with him and learned so much from him. And my first flight was in a Cessna 172. Это Cessna 172, американский самолет, великолепнейший самолет для первоначального обучения. Он очень простой, у него фиксированное шасси, фиксированный винт. Он имеет хорошую механизацию. Он очень прост в обслуживании и не менее прост в пилотировании. In 1959, a Cessna 172 set the world record for the longest non-stop flight. 64 days, 22 hours and 19 minutes. In 1987, a Cessna famously landed on Red Square, piloted by the German teenager Matthias Rust. Если мне нужно летать как пилоту, то это Як. Если мне нужно просто отдохнуть и полюбоваться красотой в небе, то это Cessna. So before we fly, we have to do some checks, and the first check is to walk around the, the aircraft and give it a visual inspection. Tires, there's no funny leaking oil here, so it seems to be okay. And also just check visually that the stick is doing the right thing. Be nice to your aeroplane, because it's still with The check was successful. The plane is ready and good to fly. So we're doing the start-up sequence now, about to start the plane just doing the final check, um, and, uh, and then we will start. Taxing a Cessna is relatively simple, but in the first days of my learning, it felt very weird using legs to direct the plane. The props on the Cessna and the Yak rotate different ways. During takeoff on the Cessna, you need right rudder, but on the Yak, considerable left rudder. During our flight, we tried some exercises. So, so that's a slow speed of 45 knots in slow flight mode. So now we go back to normal mode. We're going to, so now we're going to show you a trick, an anti-gravitational trick with a pen. And then when I release now, So we spend about 20 minutes in the air. Now it's time for us to land. Consider the hardest part of flying and today there is quite a crosswind and it's very gusty. Look at that concentration. So there we go, that was our flight in the Cessna. It was very exciting. And now we can go and try a yak. For me personally, the Yak 18T is an exciting monster of a plane. It's bigger than the Cessna and was created to train Soviet pilots in civil aviation schools. Unlike the Cessna, it has low wings and a retractable undercarriage. It's a much more powerful aircraft. If you compare it with the Cessna, it will drive 360 lbs. And this aircraft gives a lot more power, but it requires a lot more power. I only have a little experience flying the Yak. That's why I'm going to need Pavel's help. This plane really puts hair on your chest, and after mastering it, you are ready to transfer to the Yak-40, a small jet passenger aircraft. In fact, the cockpit layouts are similar. This Yak has recently been repainted, and it looks absolutely beautiful. And the cockpit is gorgeous, almost like a Bentley. <laughs> I have a lot less experience inside the Yak-18T, so um, with the help of Mike Spandelka and uh, uh, with uh, Pavel, uh, we're going to get this plane into the air. Atvinta! Adventure. Okay. Woo! We just got the back started. One of the big differences between the Cessna and the Yak is that the Yak is certified to perform aerobatics. Flying the Yak somehow makes you feel like a big pilot. Having mastered the Cessna and flown solo, 
When I then first flew the Yak, I felt like I was back at the beginning again. After the flights, we visited the hangar. Here, planes are maintained, repaired and checked. So the instruments in the cockpit of this Yak 18T are the old school analog instruments, which in Russian are called budilniki, which means alarm clock, because they kind of do look like an alarm clock. Но это появилось тогда, когда появились дисплеи. Вот, тогда появилось слово будильники, потому что похоже на будильники. Но да. мне больше нравятся вот эти, кстати, приборы. Mm -hmm. Да, мне тоже очень нравится. Потому что тоже... а, снять а, информацию с дисплея, с цифры, всегда сложнее. Mm -hmm. А здесь а, я вижу Сразу. Да, положение стрелки, и мне, в принципе, его достаточно, и я вижу тенденцию стрелки, куда она пытается уйти. А есть место, где ты еще используешь радио? Compass. Я слушал музыку в свое время. А, да? Да. Через радио компас. Да. After flying, we love to come back to the Alpina Air Club, which has a great hotel, bar and cafe. It's a lovely place to stay and has Russia's yummiest serniki. So here is probably the world's most unique and brilliant loo. It's an aeroplane. And first of all, you must board the aeroplane. You close the door. Message from the captain. Fantastic. And we see here all the standard controls from an aeroplane. It's just genius. The tap is even the thrust control. This place is truly genius. I mean, where else would you find anywhere like this than in Russia? Ну, во-первых, это интересно, и поэтому человек сразу расширяет свой кругозор. Второй момент, авиация очень хорошо структурирует мышление. Авиация это такой э, вид занятий, который э, не ограничивается, собственно, полетом. So it's the end of a busy day. We spent the whole day in the sky. How magical is that? Planes are now gone to bed. We hope you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel down below and come back and watch us again. I am not cold. Okay, ninety nine. Peaky boo. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Should ask. Oh, hi guys. Right, what are you doing next? Talk to Nathan. Pavel, excuse me, but should I ask? Sorry. Ah, delicious, Nathan.